Hello and welcome back to The Journal for August 2014. I'm your host, Ron Carpenito. Morgan Healy is off this month. This year, 4th of July road race put on by the Borderline Running Club was a success despite a weather forecast that canceled and delayed many 4th of July plans, including our own traditional fireworks event. In this month's fitness segment, Lisa Ritchie interviewed race director Chris Marshall to find out just what goes into planning and executing an event of this size and complexity. Hi, today is July 3rd. It's the day before the big 4th of July celebration in North Andover. Kicking off the events tomorrow at the Common bright and early is going to be the North Andover 4th of July road race. So we're really excited about that. Our residents have been training. They're looking forward to running alongside their neighbors, friends, family members. And today we're at the Greater Boston Running Company where you can see those that are registered are picking up their race numbers and others are stopping by to register if they haven't done so already. I'll be talking to the race director, Chris Marshall, who's here with me today. And tomorrow we'll be shooting some footage, so you'll also see some clips of how the event actually plays out. So, Chris, thanks for being here. Pleasure. Just a few questions for you. I want to sure. know about the event and how it, what it takes to actually pull something of this magnitude together so it goes off without a hitch tomorrow. Uh, well, the event is a 5K and a 10K. It starts with a kids' race. This, is, uh, this race has been around for about 36 years. Uh, this is our second year, the Borderline Running Club, and my first uh, second year directing this. Um, what it takes to pull this off is a lot of volunteers, probably about 100 volunteers uh, that we have, and a lot of cooperation from the town and from the uh, various departments within the town. Uh, sponsorships, um, just, you know, one of the sponsors is the Greater Boston Running Company, where we are today, allowing us to use their facility, being a big financial sponsor. So a lot of, a lot of coordination, a lot of funds, and a lot of volunteer, a lot of elbow grease, really. That's great. I have seen a little bit about what goes beyond the scenes this year, and I could tell that there was a lot of work put into that. How many runners do you have as of today signed up? Uh, well, when we shut down registration last night, we had 770 people registered, and we needed to do that to assign numbers, and we've reopened registration today just here at Greater Boston Running Company, and we've probably had about 20 people uh, register here at Greater Boston uh, Running Company. Um, we, you know, weather dependent, of course, uh, we could pick up as many as two or 300 more tomorrow morning. That, of course, is weather dependent. Last year, we had 300 people sign up on race day, so... We're hoping for about a thousand. So weather dependent, you mentioned. I know it's like a nail biter to the end. Mm -hmm. It sounds like some storms are coming in. But do you think the race is still going to be held? Absolutely. We've been watching the situation for a couple of days now. Um, I put a message out on our website saying that we're going to we're going to run. Runners run, uh, rain or shine. Uh, of course, we're always concerned about runner safety and things that would make us stop the race and pull runners off the course would be, you know, high winds or lightning. Uh, neither of which is forecasted for tomorrow, thank God. Um, but, you know, we're going to run, and uh, we're going to get wet, and uh, everybody's fine with it. The runners that are leaving here with their numbers are happy, uh, eager to run, and, and we're, we'll all be there bright and early. So I know North Andover has some hills, and I'm guessing some of the runners are going to hit some, a few of those. Do you know where, they're, uh, where the challenges are going to be? A absolutely. This is the traditional course that's been around for about 36 years. Uh, the very first mile is tough. Right up Johnson Street, for those of you that know town, uh, is the first mile, um, and uh, that's a tough one. And uh, coming back up Salem Street as you return to the uh, back to the common to finish the loop is another hill. So yeah, By the graveyard there, right? Exactly. exactly. So it's a challenging course. Okay, but I'm guessing you have both elite nut runners and then people that are just looking to burn some calories off before heading to the big cookouts later. We do, we do. We have some returning elite runners and um, some folks that won, you know, the folks that won last year, the uh, 5K and the 10K returning. Um, and yeah, we've got lots of people running of all ages. We'll be, we'll be distributing, of course, first, second, third overall, both races, male and female. And then we'll be distributing um, medals to the first uh, person in each race, male and female, right through age category 80 and over. And we expect folks with strollers and we expect older folks and uh, an, really a nice family event. I like the way that sounds. I know my family and I are not running, but we'll be at the water stop handing out water to people. So I'm looking forward to that. And can you just tell me a little bit more about um, all the money that's collected? Who's benefiting from a, this event and the proceeds that are raised? Well, I mean, that's actually the best part. Um, when we were asked to take the race over two years ago, uh, we were approached by uh, one of the selectmen from the town of North Andover. 
and um, they wanted us to run and direct the road race, make it uh, what they call official again, um, and selected the Friends of the North Andover Senior Center to be the host charity. So our running club um, is donating all of our time, and we're certainly we're not taking any fee or financially benefiting from this at all, and all the net proceeds of the race, uh, and when I say net proceeds, all the funds that we take in from runners for registering, net of our costs to put on the event, uh, get diverted directly to the Friends of the North Andover Senior Center. So last year, our first year running the event, that equated to about $24,000. And um, the Friends of the North Andover Senior Center is a great group of individuals, and uh, they're involved in all sorts of, of funding mechanisms for the Senior Center itself and for the senior citizens in the community that may, ne may need some help with grocery, fuel assistance, and so forth. Um, so really a, a wonderful charity, and we are honored to be able to, to participate in helping them. Good for you. That is an, an outstanding number that you're donating, the amount of money. So that's awesome. Thank you for giving back to this community. We're really looking forward to having a really fun, um, energetic, bright, sunny day, hopefully, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, thanks for talking to us, and good luck with everything. Thank you, Lisa. And we're proud to report our own North Andover Cam Access Coordinator, Tiffany Bijan, ran in this event and was in the clip you just watched. Tiffany finished in the middle of the pack with a time of 30.25. Way to go, Tiffany. And after all the funds are tallied, the road race is expected to raise more than $18,000, 100% of which is donated to the Friends of the North Andover Senior, Citizen, Senior Center. Well, it's been a busy month and summer for Jen and Tara on the entertainment front, and there are still more great happenings as summer winds down. Let's check in with them now to see what's going on for you to enjoy. Hello, North Andover. This is my friend Tara. And this is my friend Jen. And we welcome you back to our August segment on the Journal, featuring all things arts and entertainment in the Merrimack Valley. We are well into summer, and I know that Jen and I have each recently returned from vacation. Tell us, Tara, where did your adventures take you? Well, I'm glad you asked, Jen. And those of you who don't know, I am originally from Texas, so I took a nice trip back home to visit my best friend in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I had an amazing time. I got to hang out at the old stockyards in Fort Worth where you actually get to see old-fashioned cowboys, rodeos, and get to eat the best Tex-Mex and barbecue. Yum. Yes. But enough about me. How was your vacation, Jen? Well, Tex. <laughs> Yippee-i-yo. I went yeah. on a few trips in the Northeast myself to visit some family and friends from as far south as Washington, D.C. and on up to North Conway, New Hampshire. We're looking forward to a family wedding at the end of the summer, but we have done a bit of hiking and playing some local baseball games and even attended a local Red Sox game to cheer on the home team. Oh. Had a great time. Go Red Sox. Woohoo! Well, enough about us. Let's get on to what's happening right here in North Andover, shall we? Right, Jen. Well, we start out this month with Acting Out's performance of Aladdin Jr. on August 8th and 9th. Be sure to bring your kids to the North Andover High School Auditorium to see favorite Disney characters such as Aladdin, Jasmine, the Genie, and of course, Abu. This show is filled with tons of old familiar songs such as Arabian Nights, A Whole New World, and my favorite, A Friend Like Me. Yes, like you, Jen. And like you, Tara. <laughs> For more information, be sure to check out the group's website at www.actingouttheater.com. So if concerts are your thing... And they are my thing. You can attend one every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. in the month of August at the North Andover Town Common. There will be a nice variety of live band performances there. Each week will feature a variety of music, from German, classic, and contemporary, to bluegrass and rock and roll. So come on out and enjoy the fun with free entertainment on the green. For more information on times and details, refer to the website at www.townofnorthandover.com. And speaking of free entertainment, this month at the Rogers Center at Merrimack College, there will be two musical film documentaries shown on August 6th and the 20th. Each commentary will start at 6.30 p.m., followed by a film screening at 7 p.m. There will also be a summer concert series performance on August 13th fe featuring Jerry Johnston. Sounds like fun. And if you're interested in more information regarding the, regarding the Rogers Center events, visit www.merrimack.edu. So wow, Tara, August is full of wicked awesome activities. Wicked. Wicked. <laughs> Oh no, just when we were having fun, it's time to wrap up our segment. Shucks. But be sure to join us next month, and until then, 
Try not to think about school. Cheers to you, North Andover. Uh, on this month's episode of The Journal, I'm Andrew Mela, town manager here in North Andover. I wanted to give you an update of what's going to happen in the upcoming fiscal year. Town meeting concluded about two months ago, and uh, certain uh, interesting initiatives have begun as a function of the beginning of the new fiscal year. Uh, first of all, something unusual happened at this town meeting. The approved budget assumed that we would not increase the tax levy, the full amount of uh, Proposition 2.5, which I think is a real positive step for residents. It did allow us, however, to add some new initiatives coming up in this particular fiscal year. The centerpiece of that is full day free kindergarten offered by the school department. Uh, it's an important initiative moving forward for the schools, not only for the education of the young people here, but also for the families in the community. The good news is, although in the first year we'll have to absorb the cost of that, and every subsequent year the state will partner with us and make sure that the cost associated with full day free kindergarten comes back to the community. Additionally, we also decided to proceed with some additional staffing at the public library to make sure that we're providing the resources at that important facility uh, moving forward. Uh, the selectmen also decided beginning in this fiscal year they would not amend any of the town fees. So again, not only will we see uh, taxes not go up in the traditional amount that they've, they've gone up from year to year, but we'll also see fees stay the same. One important initiative also for the um, community is the fact that we're building a new fire station on Chickering Road. That's proceeding through the permitting phase and you should expect the construction will begin in late fall. That's part of the comprehensive facility master plan that was adopted by a town meeting several years ago. Additionally, we're currently doing work on McAvoy Field along Sutton Street. This is an important community asset that will impact the neighborhood and communities and, and youth groups for years to come. That work should conclude in late fall and be available for use in the following fall. Finally, an important step taken recently by the Board of Selectmen. They voted once again for the third year in a row not to increase uh, water and sewer rates here in the town of North Andorra. That really is a partnership between the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, my office, and others to make sure that we maintain the costs and not increase fees um, to an extent that would impact adversely our, our community and our residents. So those are a couple of initiatives that are going on. I'd also like to bring to your attention that we have committed uh, five million dollars over the next five years to improve the roadways in the town of North Andover because we certainly received some feedback from residents that believe that we need improvement in our roadways. So hopefully that gives you an update over the summer and I'll be back uh, another episode of the Journal in the next month or so. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Mailer. Chow Bao Wow and the North Andover Fire Department have partnered for the Chow Thelma Project. This is a life-saving program to help protect our senior citizens and it's happening August 6th and Thursday, August 7th. Let's learn more now. Good morning. Uh, my name is Fire Chief Andy Malnikas, and uh, uh, today my, my purpose is to introduce a segment uh, or introduce a program that Melanie LaRocker of the Chow Bao Wow up at the Butcher Boy Plaza has uh, come up with. Uh, it's a program designed to uh, help keep the seniors at the town not the end of a safe. Hi, I'm Melanie. I am the owner of Chow Bow Wow, which is a pet supply retail store in North Andover over by the Butcher Boy Plaza. Um, with cooperation from Andrew and the North Andover Fire Department, we came up with an idea a little earlier in the year to help our senior citizen residents in the town of North Andover stay safe by going in and checking for free your fire detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. And we have a group of volunteers that are eager to come in and help. We call this project the Chow Thelma Project. And that is named for a friend of mine who was a customer for a number of years by the name of Thelma, who had lots of cats and dogs and birds. And Thelma and her husband and all of their pets fell victim to a fire this year, um, earlier in the year, because they didn't check their uh, fire alarm systems and nothing went off. So we came up with this program and her name to help everybody, all of our residents here in the town of North Andover, our senior citizens. Again, the days that we're looking to do this are going to be on Wednesday, August 6th, and Thursday, August 7th. And we're gonna invite you to give us a call at Chow Bow Wow and our phone number is 
which spells dogs, incidentally. Um, or you can stop by the store at any time, and we will accommodate you as best we can. Melanie, you've said it uh, very, very well, five, five better than I could have. Uh, again, we will uh, come into your home, and we will assess your needs. Don't hesitate to, to utilize this. This is a, a more than valuable service. And again, it was created because of the, uh, uh, the, the passing of a couple of close friends of, of Melanie. And over the years here at the fire department, I uh, have seen uh, or read about many uh, stories and cases where people uh, did not have smoke alarms, working smoke alarms, and as a result, uh, a fire uh, uh, did not, uh, they were not alerted to a fire, and as a result, were unable to, to get out safely. So do not hesitate. Uh, again, give Melanie a call at Chow Bow Wow, and I want to thank you, and I hope you take advantage of this program. And now here's our own Lieutenant Charles Gray with a public service announcement about why hot cars and dogs do not mix. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Charles Gray of the North Andover Police Department and welcome back to this month's edition on the journal. Uh, we hope everyone's having a safe and happy summer. One of the things we want to address this particular time is the calls we're getting uh, more frequently, it seems, about dogs left in vehicles unattended while people are going shopping or just in their cars in general. Uh, what people don't realize is that just because a day like today, we're going to go outside and I'm going to give you a little demonstration that how quickly the temperature inside the vehicles can heat up and how dangerous it is for dogs to be left there. Okay, we're outside today and uh, I'm going to give you a little example here so you know, but the ambient temperature outside here today at the Lawrence Municipal Airport is uh, 78 degrees, partly cloudy. So I decided to leave my two dogs in the car for a little while and, and you know, no big deal, right? Well, let's go take a look. Come on inside, I want you to see this. Here's my two dogs, Fluffy and Pickles, and uh, well, they're pretty warm. In fact, if you look over there, you can see the temperature gauge at well over 120. Now, I didn't think it was that hot out, and uh, I was only gone for a little while, right? So that's, that's not a bad thing, but these dogs have been sitting inside this car for half an hour now, and quite frankly, anything over 15 minutes, they're probably not going to make it. They're going to go into some sort of uh, respiratory distress. What people need to realize is dogs don't sweat like we do, okay? What they do is they pant when they're really hot and they need to cool off, and they also breathe through their paws. Now, if that dog is sitting on a hot leather seat for any number of minutes when that temperature is 120, he's going to go into distress really quickly, okay? Even if my windows are down, okay, there may be a cross breeze, but it's still not enough to get that temperature um, enough where these dogs can safely be in the car. So the message the North End of a Police is trying to send you is, during the summer months, if you can leave your dog at home, leave him at home, okay? Having a dog inside a vehicle with the windows open is not good either because if that dog jumps out and starts running through the parking lot of traffic, we have other issues to deal with. The important message here is understand that these animals cannot survive in this environment. People see this, they call us, we have to respond. A lot of times it's, a, it's an admonishment to the owner of the animals who did this, but there could be criminal penalties, okay? This is a cruelty to animal situation. So please be aware of it, be cognizant of it, and if you see something like this out there, please call us because we will take action. On July 29th, the selectman and town manager, Andrew Mailer, held a groundbreaking ceremony to celebrate improvements being made to McAvoy Field. Past and present government officials were in attendance, as well as Janie McAvoy, the wife of Bill McAvoy, for whom the field is named. The $900,000 upgrades were approved at town meeting and will include new baseball and softball fields with improved drainage, soccer fields, a walking track, new playground, restroom facilities, and a concession stand. The project is expected to be completed by fall of 2015. And you can catch the whole groundbreaking ceremony on GovCam. The honking horns on 114 has become a familiar sound as Market Basket employees continue to protest the firing of former CEO Arthur T. Demoulis. Many customers have also been supporting the employees' fight by boycotting the grocery chain. Well, the North Andover Middle School held a celebration in honor of recent retirees Ellen Finneran and Marty O'Toole in June. Ms. Finneran was a 7th grade earth science teacher for 45 years, and Mr. O'Toole was a 7th grade history teacher for 29 years as well. Merrimack College's plan to construct five new dormitory buildings on Austin Field, located at the intersection of Elm Street and Rock Ridge Road, has met with stiff resistance from neighboring residents in Andover. The college has said the housing will help ensure they become a 
foot-friendly campus and maintain enough living space for incoming students. Residents in op opposition calling themselves the Coalition for Merrimack College Smart Growth said the construction will hurt their property values, destroy an open field, and increase crime. The proposed plan unveiled in June will include five dorms for about 350 students. Merrimack hopes to break ground in the fall and complete construction by 2016. Two of the buildings will be located within North Andover. The school committee is currently debating between switching to the new PARC standardized tests or stay with the existing MCAS model. The PARC test is closer aligned with the Federal Common Core standards and is currently undergoing a pilot program throughout the state this year. The school committee expects to render a decision in October, but is concerned by students' potential unfamiliarity with the PARC model and the lack of compatibility with prior student MCAS records. The Board of Health is currently eyeing a new local regulation in an effort to reduce youth smoking. Suggested regulations include classifying e-cigarette sales in a manner similar to tobacco, barring the establishment of hookah bars without a waiver, and require identification for tobacco sales if the person appears under the age of 27. Among other regulations, the Board expects to continue discussion into July. The Board of Selectmen have granted an entertainment license to Smolek Farms for 2014 calendar year, allowing the farm to continue hosting numerous weddings and functions deemed critical for their continued success, according to the farm. The Selectmen granted the license to Smolak Farms after the business complied with a number of noise mitigation requests, notably the installation of soundproof curtains around the function area. Neighbors to the farm, however, say the noise mitigation efforts have been remedial and are still suffering from loud music and quite rambunctious functions on weekend nights. The Department of Public Works is asking residents to stop and scoop the poop of their pets while taking their dogs out on a walk. The department notes dog waste left in the woods, on the lawn, or on the street or sidewalk is often washed down storm drains into drainage ditches or directly into waterways, including Lake Kachikawit, North Andover's sole drinking water supply. Now let's turn to the CAM event calendar and look ahead to what's coming up in the month of August and beyond. Well, there are two more children's shows scheduled to be performed at the North Andover Common, Co Andover Common on August 5th. Husband and wife team Vic Sticks will take the stage with their recycled instruments and comedic stylings. And on August 7th, Davy the Clown will entertain with juggling, silly jokes, accordioning music, and a unicycle. Shows are held at 10 a.m. In case of inclement weather, the shows will take place at North Andover Middle School. Tuesday, August 5th is the National Night Out. North Andover is one of 15,000 communities nationwide that participates in this event. Come down to Hayes Stadium at the Middle School to meet your law enforcement officials, learn about crime prevention, and enjoy some free goodies from local vendors. The event runs from 6 to 8 p.m. And the Journal will be there with our live set interviewing people as it happens. It's always a great time. Join the Friends of Stevens Estate Memorial Library at the Stevens Estate for Monday Night Movies Under the Tent. Bring your own blanket or chairs and enjoy a night out with your family. The movies start at 7 p.m. and they're free for all. To learn more about what's playing, Call the Summer at the Stevens Estate line at 978-688-9508 and select Option 1. Stevens Pond will close for the season on Friday, August 22nd, and the first day for school for North Andover students is Tuesday, September 2nd. So make sure to squeeze in as much fun as possible before then. Now, if you have an event you'd like to see in our event calendar, or want to contribute a story idea or even host a segment of your own, we definitely want to hear from you. Email us at thejournal at northandovercam.org. We have hoped you enjoyed this edition of The Journal. I'm Ron Carpenito. Thank you for watching North Andover, and we'll see you next month. Mm -hmm.